So that's the uh, long-ish introduction to energy. It's uh, um, really the concept of energy comes from this observation that in nature, as you observe motions that are common in nature, that there appears to be a conserved quantity. And um, the reason we talk about different forms of energy is to, out of this desire and need, to quantitatively express this uh, property of things that appears to be conserved in nature. Um, so when you look at energy, it's always a, uh, it's always a calculated quantity. Kinetic energy is a calculated quantity. Potential energy is calculated quantity. And as you will see in this video, um, it, as part of pre-lab, it talks about thermal energy, chemical energy. All these are calculated quantities. Uh, what I'm trying to say is there's never a situation where you measure energy directly. This is in contrast with other um, other physical quantities. Um, other physical quantities like velocity, position, those things are directly measured. But energy is one that will always be calculated from other quantities that you did direct, directly measure. So um, having said that, the reason, um, the reason I'm emphasizing this, uh, that it's a calculated quantity is, so it's a kind of a matter of definition. So with, let me get my annotation tool here. So we did the kinetic energy. We say that uh, kinetic energy is equal to one half mass times velocity squared. And you could ask a question, why is that kinetic energy? And your answer is that, well, turns out as things interact in an elastic setup, where kinetic energy and potential energy, where mechanical energy is conserved, this expression is the expression that's conserved, not mv squared, not m times v, although that will sometimes be conserved. <laughs> um, so, so that's why this is the expression for kinetic energy. And the expression for potential energy, uh, you will see two different forms of potential energy. Well, technically three. Um, well, you'll see two different forms. You'll see gravitational potential energy, and you will see spring potential energy. And the reason we come up with the expression for potential energy that we do come up with is because those expressions lead to the total mechanical energy conserved in situations where there's no involvement with the thermal or chemical energy. And later on in future classes, when we talk about thermal and chemical energy, that will still be with the goal of conserving this quantity that we call energy. So with that, um, I need to mention a few more things that's not listed here, because when you eventually go up to physics 4C, you will see other forms of energy. So the other forms of energy that I just want you to mention now are um, uh, radiative energy or radiation energy. That's the energy carried by uh, light, energy carried by electromagnetic radiation. And one particular form of energy is, um, I, I love highlighting this because it's uh, the form of energy that most people don't anticipate. It's what we call, what we will call in physics 4C, rest energy. And it might sound a little bit odd, especially in contrast to kinetic energy. I mean, um, um, so it makes a sense that moving things have energy. But what do we mean by rest energy? Um, you might have heard of this phrase before in popular science and whatnot. E equals mc square. And as a matter of general expression, that's not correct. Uh, what it's referring to is, is rest energy of an object that has mass m is mc squared. And in special relativity, uh, you will eventually see this expression that total energy is equal to 
gamma mc squared. And gamma is a numerical factor you will see. And in special relativity, kinetic energy gets rewritten this way. Instead of it being 1 half mv squared, which is only classically correct, not correct in special relativity, kinetic energy is the total energy minus the rest energy. And um, when you get to physics 4C, you will see, uh, you will see the derivation that motivates all this uh, new expressions. And what I want to highlight is that our underlying motivation in defining energy is to describe a conserved quantity. And uh, in special relativity, the reason we have to start describing rest energy is because unless you do that, you see energy changing. You see a massive particle that's decaying into two very fast moving particles, or you see two highly energetic particles colliding, forming one thing that's massive, and so mass is changing, and it, it's at rest. So if you're just looking at kinetic energy, kinetic energy has changed. And in order to, in that context, to still hold to the kind of um, postulate, assumption, law that energy is conserved, we have to modify our definition of energy so that it's a conserved quantity. It's a little bit backward, but there's a good justification for it. And it turns out when you introduce just a few things, then everything still works out right. So, but I, you know, I guess uh, when you see this, I didn't want you to feel like um, we are uh, arguing in circles because um, really the, uh, the starting place for energy states are conserved quantity. So um, I guess the moment when we can no longer modify our definition so that um, energy is conserved and that's when physics breaks down, but that hasn't happened yet.